Now, for our next talk, we have the topic, Expect the Unexpected, New Approaches to Unconventional Shopper Journeys, This Holiday Season and Beyond. For this, we have Chelian Pankras, Director of Digital Commerce Partnerships from Edian. Chelian has been working in digital customer experience ecosystem across several geographies over the past 10 years in sales and technical teams to sell and deliver amazing customer experiences and journeys for international brands. So he has a wide spectrum of experiences from marketing automation to commerce and payments. Prior to joining Edian, he has held uh, senior partnership roles at Magento and Eloqua, so he comes from our ecosystem. So welcome, Chalian. Uh, I'll let you explain more. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. Good to be back at Mi Magento. Thank you to uh, Renosis for having an event. Um, super excited to actually see humans again face to face. Uh, it's been a while. So um, uh, it's been a pleasure being here. Thanks, RV, again for putting this together. Um, so my name is Chilean. Uh, I used to be, I was actually an old Magento folk, but now I moved on to payments. So I work for Adyen. We're a modern payments company. And I'll talk about kind of the trends we're seeing and kind of give some practical tips as well. So expect the unexpected. I don't know if you saw the news this week. Uh, it's looking grim. Uh, I don't want to be the bearer of grim news, but uh, Europe looks like it's locking back down slowly, right? Uh, Germany announced that they're going to go down a bit. Singapore, on the other hand, we're opening up more VTL travel lanes, so we're expecting more shoppers from uh, you know, other countries coming to Singapore. Uh, you know, Beijing is also locking down. And then also we've got the supply chain issues that's hitting all our retailers as well, and that's affecting our e-commerce and uh, our retail stores as well. So I'm a practical guy, so I'm going to give you some practical approaches, I guess, that you can leverage maybe this holiday season and beyond. The first thing is to talk about how we're in this evolutionary change of you know, the way we do shopping, right? It's become highly contextual, and it's very experience-driven. Um, unified commerce is one of them, right? It's the idea that a person can buy a product whenever they want, whatever channel they wish to do, without changing the context, without having an e-commerce store, without going to a physical store, without buying an in-app purchase or a game. So all, this, all these different journeys are expected now. Then we talk about loyalty as well. How do we simplify that? How do we make it easier and keep it in, integrated into the stack? Then we come talk about payments as well. We've got Atome here, you know, buy now, pay later. They're a massive trend. How can we offer that to our merchants, both in-store and uh, online as well, or on their mobile device? And then as we get into kind of these new journeys where, um, you know, we're concerned about hygiene now, you want to go to a retail store, maybe you want to do a transaction without actually physically touching the terminals, how can we improve on that? Is there a way we can just use our phone scan something and just walk out, right? And all, how's that all connected in the back end? So this is kind of the checkout list experience. So all these kind of things is, is, is changing the way we're doing shopping, and that's across online and offline as well. So the first tip, uh, first kind of takeaway or tip, consumers are unpredictable and you know, pretty straightforward, but they're quite easy to lose. So we did this agility study. You can download it on our website. I can share it with, with you later. Uh, no surprise here that 87% of Singaporeans want a flexible kind of cross-channel experience. And that comes to that shift from omni-channel to unified commerce, right? Having all your channels actually integrated into a single stack that is talking to each other. And that's important with payments as well. If you have a payment solution that's powering your e-commerce, which is different than the, what's powering it in your store, those are, you know, you can call it an omni-channel journey, but it's not unified. They're not, these systems are still not talking to each other. So it's quite important as we, you know, as consumers expect you to reach out to them through all these channels, that you have that integrated solution in the back end is, you know, kind of the unified commerce story. What I'll show you here is kind of um, how can you, you know, customers are easy to lose, right? As soon as they have a bad experience, they're out. How do you make loyalty simple? So this is kind of a, a merchant here that's uh, opening up their loyalty app. And what they're doing is entering in their credit card information. Uh, and what's happening actually on the back end is, uh, you know, we're kind of securely tokenizing it and saving it. Since they have kind of a unified commerce setup, this data is sitting across all the different channels. 
right? So it's kind of set, set up in here. So now when this person goes to the physical store and actually leverages that same credit card, what we can do is really automatically recognize that it, that is the same person. So gone are the days you're having another loyalty card in your pocket and you know, some auntie's asking you what your phone number or email address is and you know, it's taken a while for you to purchase. Kind of providing this frictionless way of building you know, uh, loyalty to your brand is uh, you know, it's a really good idea. Uh, uh, frictionless journey, sorry. Uh, the next part is also how, how do you get people to stick to your brand? Part of it is um, uh, doing uh, charity work as well, right? So we've created all these frictionless checkout experiences where on checkout, you actually can like here for, for example, is a carbon, reduce your carbon footprint. So it rounds up to the even amount and kind of moves that transaction directly to the charity and the rest of the items, um, obviously, to you. So, Creating these uh, frictionless journeys as well is important. The second one is consumers still love the store, um, but it's not the default anymore, right? I think, no surprise here, 72% uh, of Singaporeans want to go back into the store. I think we've been open for a little while, so it does make sense. But the fundamental role of the, sh of the shop, uh, of the store has changed. So, before it was that linear experience. You go in, you touch a field product, you go to the checkout counter, and you're out. Now a store has to act and do many more things, right? Basic, BOPIS, buy online, pick up in store. But also, can someone buy a product of yours online and go to the store and refund it, right? Can, can you support those journeys yet? Um, purchase out of stock items, so endless aisle, right? Do you have a system in your store where they can purchase that or ship from another store location? And the last one is kind of shop in store and complete purchases online. This is what I'm talking about. Like, I was talking to one uh, famous uh, footwear brand just last week, and they want to get rid of their uh, service desk completely. You know, the front desk where you make a payments, they just want to make another shelf there, and they want to make sure you can complete the purchase wherever you want in the store. So after you try on the shoes, you know, the st staff will come over, they'll have a mobile POS terminal that's connected to their e-com, complete the transaction there, right? So all these kind of fundamental changes are happening at the store that we're, we need to look for. And I got this from the Adobe Digital Trends study where only 28% of executives can really get quick insights into their data. And that's why payment plays a pretty powerful role uh, when you have kind of powering both your online and offline, is seeing the data that we can uncover with just credit card information. For example, every time you, you tap a card, online or offline, we know where the issuing country is. Uh, we know uh, where you're coming from and what the average transaction value is. So now we can kind of see here in this example, you know, Thailand, they got high ATV transactions but low number of volumes, whereas the UK, they got a significant number of transactions and low ATV. So that will give the e-com team something to think about and look into the data and see what's happening there. Next is uh, really like look at your um, traffic. Is it in-store only? Is it e-com? And who is doing both, right? Uh, getting the, kind of these insights, if you have that kind of same payment uh, powering both, you can get this information and figure out how you want to uh, target these segments as well. And one of the interesting things is like, you know, we talk about building these omni-channel journeys all the time, but how do you actually calculate the value of these omni-channel journeys? And one of the interesting ones we're seeing is where you can see if in-store refunds are actually being converted into upsells, right? So if someone comes back to a store, it doesn't matter if they bought it online or offline, while they're walking through the store, did the clerk had the ability to kind of convert them or upsell them and whatnot. So you kind of see the effectiveness of the uh, omnichannel journeys as well. So super interesting uh, data we can look at. This is quite straightforward. I mean, just seeing um, where your shoppers are coming from, POS versus uh, uh, your on online. And the next big thing is live shopping. Live shopping is, a, is quite a big thing, and you know, we're seeing it quite often. I saw a study from McKinsey. 10 to 20% of all e-commerce will be initiated by live shopping in 2026. And this is, um, yeah, this is a change we're seeing. We, we're seeing a big adoption. There's a partner here called Ghost Retail that we work with. They're integrated with Magento as well. And they're pro providing this platform where it's basically getting all the SKU information from your e-commerce website. Um, so the, the staff can actually either sign in from this store or from their comfort of their home. 
fire it up. So if someone comes online, wants to ch chat to someone, they, they fire it up, and they can actually see what they've been browsing at, what products. So the store clerk can actually put the products into their basket and actually complete the trans transaction right there. So from a payments perspective, what we've done is kind of you know, have a built-in uh, plug-in to this. So they actually can complete the payment with your Apple Pay and Google Pay. So the native kind of payment functionality that you have in your phone increases conversion as well. So definitely something to consider and see uh, upcoming trends as well. Start early. Uh, I've been trying to get an iPhone Max 13 Pro, the big one for my wife. It's, it's sold out in most of the Singapore locations. But luckily, you know, uh, them being so quite cool, they can get the kind of endless aisle option and you know, have a good experience anyways. So no, uh, uh, no surprise here, 80% 80, 80 of Singaporeans won't return to a store if they've had a bad experience. And that's again, are you making sure that you have all these journeys available to you, both on your phone and in store? Because sometimes you run into a situation where yes, you can place an order in store, but you can't have that same experience on the phone. So making sure you have all these kind of range of journeys available both on your phone and your, um, your mobile storefront as well. And stock transparency. Um, in this particular case, in my example, yeah, they were able to see the stock and where it came from and what store had it available. So making sure you have that available as well. Next one is social commerce is key. So we're, we're seeing a lot of these WhatsApp business accounts uh, popping up and that's the way to start communicating to your merchants, right? And this example here is um, where someone is talking to a, to a customer, uh, seeing if they're a return customer or not, and them actually returning, uh, sorry, sh sharing a product that they recommended. What's interesting now is once the product is recommended, they can actually send an invoice and a payment link right to the WhatsApp. So there's another way to capture your audience through a different channel, through your WhatsApp uh, text channel. And again, once they want to complete the payment, that's kind of natively built into your mobile app and hopefully increase your conversion rates as well. So we call it pay by link. Um, it, it allows you the ability to kind of distance selling. So you can send the link through kind of any avenues, even like through a gaming system. Um, you can pay with your own device. Uh, so you can just scan a QR code and you're going to complete the payment uh, on your phone. And also like for e-commerce in store. So we're seeing that as well, where you can go to the store now and uh, obviously online you'll have more payment options available to you. So you can scan that and kind of complete payment on your phone. That would signal the POS in the retail store and kind of complete the options. And the last, uh, the last tip I had was payment methods matter, right? Um, so uh, there's quite a lot of payment methods out there. I think Malaysia just issued like 20 different wallets that are going to come out. So there's a lot of wallets. There's a lot of, you know, the buy now, pay later is coming out. So it's the ability to make sure you offer the right set of payment methods uh, to your merchants, right? So Alipay, WeChat Pay, Grab Pay, whatever it may be. And making sure, you know, it's personalized to the merchant. If they come land onto your web store, uh, if it's on a mobile device or on the, on the desktop, are we presenting them the right payment options for them, right? And making it super convenient for that person to transact and convert. And the last thing is also just kind of being able to leverage the native technology in, in your uh, mobile devices. Apple is really cool. I don't, like, I don't want to get into too much payments talk, but there's 3DS, you know, when that ugly redirect, you need to do redirect and type in your SMS code to approve the transaction. The new version of this is like using the Apple technology where you use your thumbprint or your face scan to kind of confirm the transaction. So making sure you have a solution that's natively built into that stack definitely increases your conversion rate as well. So something to consider. So yeah, we're Adyen. Um, we accept payments pretty much from any payment methods across any channels. And this is a good example of JD Sports where they've rolled out a uh, kind of a self-serve POS station that's, uh, that's connected to their e-com as well. So the person can actually buy a bunch of products, can go to this machine, check themselves out, and if they wanted to buy something that wasn't available, they can put it in here as well, and then you know, they get that shipped that later. But what the interesting is, they only get charged for the amount they're walking out with. You don't want to charge a merchant uh, for something that's not been shipped yet or delivered yet, right? So that charge will be tacked on later when it actually gets shipped. 
So these small nuances on how you can actually help you know, make your customer more delighted with the experience uh, matters, right? I know it's not a retail, but uh, I, like, I, like, <laughs> I like McDonald's as well. Uh, but you can now order, pre-order McDonald's on your mobile app. So you go to your mobile app, you pick whatever you want. Based on the geolocation, it'll tell you what's the closest McDonald's in your area. Pick that McDonald's. Uh, you complete your payment. Obviously, your card is already tokenized, so it's fairly quick. And then what happens is, when, as soon as you get close to the location, based on geolocation tagging, you know, they'll start preparing the food for you. And then you can advise, obviously, in the app if you want to eat in the store or you just want to check out or what you're doing. So very convenient. Again, kind of that online, offline journey that's going uh, well. Christian Louboutin, um, they're actually on Magento and running on Seagit Paws. Uh, I didn't know, but they have a, a large part of their business actually fixing some of their shoes. So you actually go into their store, send it, give them the shoes in, and the way it works is they basically usually call you back and tell you, hey, this is what the damage is, and this is what's going to cost to fix the shoes. So what they've done now is kind of digitize that process. So you drop off your shoes, they'll reach out to you by WhatsApp, kind of talk to you and say, hey, this is how much it's going to cost to fix the shoes. They drop you a, a pay-by link, so just kind of complete the payment right there, and it's done. And it's kind of synced up to their Magento and their, and their back office system. So really cool way of uh, doing that as well. Uh, this is a Magento event, so you know we do we are a payments acceptance platform. So we have an out of the box integration with Magento. Uh, we have a significant number of merchants on it. Um, we've built the plugin in house, which is quite unique. So we have a set of developers that all they do is work on the Magento plugin. So when it comes to updates and patches and whatnot, if you're on a new version or old version, we kind of can help you support that. Um, what's also cool is we've, uh, we talked about PWA a bit, so we have compatibility with that for the payment flows as well. And yeah, all the standard Apple Pay stuff is all kind of done. So um, very strong and reliable integration that we've built, and you can see some of the brands that are transacting with them right now. So I haven't talked about who we are. So Adyen, we are a Dutch company, um, but our Singapore is our APAC hub. We have 100 folks sitting over in the Funan office. Um, you know, process a significant amount of volume, uh, 200, over 200 people now in APAC region. I think uh, we have a good coverage of payment methods. And uh, one of the unique facts about Adyen is that we've built everything to the ground up. So we built, you know, the rails directly into Visa and MasterCard and do the processing ourselves. So we've never acquired a company in our history. So wherever you go, whichever country you want to roll out with us, it's the same experience. So it's one integration, single platform, wherever you want to go. So we do work with uh, a large list of exciting brands here in Singapore uh, and uh, across the world. So if you have any questions, me and Yen Wa are here. I'm happy to help you guys. We're sitting in the corner over there. Thank you very much. <laughs>